Hey guys, it's Dylan, and today I'm going to be making another video on my Max Shacks. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to wire your Max Shacks up to 220 volts. Now I'm going to start with my disclaimer. Do this at your own will. This is how I wired my Max Shacks to 220. I'm not saying it's the correct way, or I'm not saying this is a professional way either, but this is how I've done it. So do it at your own discretion. I'm not liable if anything happens. Just to say that, just to cover my own butt, this is how I did it and it works. So what you're gonna start with is you're gonna make sure you have a, an extra breaker on your breaker box. You wanna have a 30 amp relay coming from your breaker box, pretty much from your breaker box all the way to a, like either a quick disconnect or you're gonna wire it, hardwire it straight in. I chose the quick disconnect just in case I ran into any issues with the pump itself that I can quickly disconnect it here. Obviously, even for right now, it's beneficial that I can just touch everything in here with knowing I am not receiving any power but you do need a 30 amp breaker and 12 by two wire running the whole way. So you need your white, your black, and then your ground, which will wire to one of these plugs. The plugs doesn't really matter. You just need to make sure it's the three prong. I'm just using a basic plug from Home Depot, or the basic one as well. It's just a three prong. It looks like that. All right, so once you have your wiring all figured out where you have your plug and your quick disconnect or you've hardwired it in, you are ready to start working on the inside. So make sure you are fully disconnected from power. Obviously you're not plugged in and you're gonna open this up to see this diagram that looks like Greek. And they're showing the solid lines are gonna be the three or 230 volts and the dotted are the 115. So as you see with the solid line, the blue and the red are going to be to one connector. Whereas the white and the black go to the ones to the sides of it. So I will show you guys on our relay or contactor right here. So you may already notice when you open up your push button, this little cover off, that our relays look a little different. So here is my old relay. And yes, it did work, but I had an issue. So these are pretty much exactly the same. There are minute differences between the two, but they pretty much worth work both the same, except this one is rated for 220. So I had this one in for a little while, I would say the first month and a half, two months, and it worked great, no issues at all. But I ran across one day when I was using the lift a lot, I was going up and down quite a few times because I was trying to actually center the rear end in this car and found that I smelled like a little burning. I didn't actually smell that at first, the breaker flipped on me first. And I, then I came over here and I was like, okay, why isn't the push button working? I went and flipped the breaker. And then I checked up there, I had power and everything was fine. And then I went to open this up and smelt a little burning, obviously unplugging it first. And the contactor, which is the TMC 18, had went out. I contacted Binpact and at, told them kind of what was going on and what my theory was. And they kind of ran me around for a little while. And then they said they would send me one. They sent me the wrong item. This wasn't even what they sent me. They sent me something completely different even though I gave them my model number and everything. So I went on Amazon and picked up this or Biomain. I'll link it down in the description, but this is a 220 um, contactor and it fits exactly the same and fits still in the box and has not given me a lick of issues ever since I put it in. And it is definitely rated for 220. Whereas this one is probably only rated for 110. Now it does have the 220 capabilities, but as you saw after a little bit of use, especially heavy use of lifting up and down that it just seemed to give out. It gave off like a burning smell. Now, thankfully you will have a 30 amp breaker, which it did flip. So if anything was to happen with your one that it currently is inside, this one should be good enough for it, especially if you're just gonna be the casual user where you're not gonna be like up and down about 42 times a day. This should be plenty enough. Now, if it does seem to burn out, you do know the breaker will save it. And you do have a di quick disconnect here. So if you ever find out your lift just stops working and it's just like the push button just stopped, there's a high likely chance that it is your contactor. So try not to stress that it's in the motor or the pump or ever anywhere else. So just make sure you check your power, make sure you are getting power to your plug, make sure your breaker's not flipped. And then if it comes to that, take your cover off, take a, a whiff to see if it is your contactor. So we're gonna get into the wiring now. Here is where the biggest confusion was. So I went over this a little bit earlier where it shows the dotted lines and then it shows the solid black. So you're pretty much gonna take your blue and red, which is right here, that are running to the other side. You're gonna put them on one pole. So you're gonna put them on 
T1. That's where I see it. They're just going to go on their own separate pole. And then across, you're going to see there is T2 and T3. You're going to run each of your hots to one of those separated ones. So doesn't matter whether you match white to white, black to black. We just ran them across to be parallel to each other. So obviously we just put them black to black and white to white for aesthetics, but these two are just your hots. And then your ground just screws to the back up in there. You shouldn't have to touch any of this um, if you have not pulled this out because this should already be screwed to the back back in there. And then these two should already be in. So mine might look a little different since I've already rewired it to um, 220, but I'm pretty sure the white and the blue were already attached somewhere on top of these two, whereas now you're just gonna separate those and put them on their own terminal. And then over here, I'm not 100% sure either if either of these are changed, but you can see that the push button kind of runs one side down to this little A2, and then one to a hot. So it's making the connection, and then the other hot down to A1. So you're pretty much taking the bridge from here, you're taking the bridge from L2 and putting one from L2 to A1 and then on the other side where it is oop, L3 and you're going to run it from one side of your push button right here down to this side of your push button down to A2. So how you're going to wire this is you're going to have your two powers. So these are going to be your two hots. You're going to have each of these plug into L2 and L3. So L2, L3, just your two middles. You're going to have four in total. So you'll see one, two, three, four. Use your two middles. It doesn't matter which hot you put. They're both the same. They're both just 220 or 110 power each. You're going to plug those in. Then you're going to have a bridge from your L2 come down to A1. Pretty much just like that. And then you're going to have one from L3, which is right here come into your push button on either side. I don't think it matters. Now don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure it does not matter. And then have the other side of your push button come out from here to A2. Okay, and then on your other side, you're gonna have four prongs as well, and you're gonna start with T1. T1 is where you're going to bridge your red and blue connection. So that's the main difference. I'm pretty sure before when you ran at 110, they were on top of these two hots over on this side. Uh, don't hold me to that. It's been a while since I've done this. So you're just going to make sure blue and um, red get connected onto T1. On T2 and T3, you're just going to put a black and a white, which are your two hots, on either of those terminals. I like to match them up. So pretty much I go from L2 all the way over to T2 and that be black. And then over on T3 and L, uh, L3 is the white cable. Then, once you have that all connected, you should be ready to go. So, that was the big difference between that one and this push button, which these two still have the same thing. They have the A1 and A2. So, the differences between these two is you can still see it has an A1 and A2. Same on this side, just flipped upside down. And you're just going to use the little screws on top. And this one only has three poles on top. It does have the extra pole on this side, but you are mainly just going to use these three. Whereas this one does have one extra one, which it doesn't really matter. The same process applies. So you see right here, you have your L1, L2, and L3, and then you have your, and then you have your T1, T2, and T3. So everything with your stock TMC18 contactor will be exactly the same as with this one. So I will have this one linked down in the description. This is how you wire up your Max Jax lift to 220. Um, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave it down in the comment section. Now again, do this at your own risk. This is the way I've done it and I can power it on just to show you guys that it does work. It may be best just to call it, contact an electrician to come out if you're not comfortable doing this. You just need to go through a couple safety protocols before you touch any of these live wires. You just need to make sure you are unplugged from power, whether it be your breaker or just quick disconnect it from up here or both. Both is probably more secure, but as long as you know you're disconnected from power. But anyways, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Anyways, guys, Hope this video helped you out. If it did, leave a like down below and subscribe. And I will have future content, hopefully either on the 69 Chevelle or finally back on the Camaro. We'll see. Anyways, take care, guys. Stay safe. I'll talk to you guys later.